Thank you. Um, now, the subject of my talk is the quantifier totu, which means all in Old Sardinian. And why should this be interesting? Now, in modern Sardinian, this quantifier shows um, usually total lack of agreement. So we have totu su libru, the whole book, uh, but also totu sa limba, totu sas limbas, totu sos libros in contrast to, I think, all other Romance languages, maybe with the exception of Sicilian. As for Old Sardinian, there's almost no research on the agreement uh, behavior of Totu. And in 1986, Blasco Ferrer wrote that Totus, Latin Totus, became crystallized starting from the first documentations in the invariable form, Totu. And he repeats this in 2003, but then we see that he has a whole range of agreeing totus together with non-agreeing ones. And this is about all. So um, up to today, there is no information on the distribution of the agreeing and the non-agreeing forms of this totu. So since uh, for a few years now, there has been this uh, excellent corpus atlisor, which contains all medieval Sardinian texts. And so I did a corpus study on et nominal totu, um, which is in fact part of a larger studies on old Sardinian indefinites. The results will be presented in section two and we will see that agreement of totu was optional, but more or less preferred depending on gender and number. And there is one striking syntactic condition that seems to trigger obligatory agreement in Old Sardinian, which is when totu is followed by numerals. In particular, in this structure, totos tres sos fratese, all three the brothers in this order. And we will see that this is an instance of universal numeric quantifiers. The main aim of the talk is to provide a syntactic analysis within the minimalist program that explains why agreement of totu is obligatory in Old Sardinian with this um, universal numeric quantifier. And here you see the structure of my talk. Now some words on Sardinian. Sardinian is the autochthonous Romance language of Sardinia. It cannot really be attributed to Eastern or Western Romance, but as we have already seen, there is the preservation of final S, which it has in common with Western Romance languages. In the Middle Ages, there were independent kingdoms, the so-called judicates in the High and Late Middle Ages. And uh, it is from this period that Old Sardinian has documented from around 1050 to around 1400. Um, there is exclusively legal and administrative documentation of Old Sardinian uh, of different types, which you can see here, but which I won't go into. Now the corpus study. Uh, so I did this search with Atlisor and got lots of findings. And then I el eliminated things that uh, are not uh, corresponding to Toto. And then I manually separated ad nominal totu. So not counting pronominal and predicative uses because this is what I wanted to investigate and came up with 479 occurrences. I ordered these occurrences with respect to gender and agreement. The masculine singular is not really much sense to uh, to list it because it could either be agreement or just a default form. So I, I stick to these three and we see feminine singular, we have agreeing, totu in tota terra and non-agreeing, totu corona. Uh, feminine plural, tota sas festas, totu sas ispesas, agreeing or non-agreeing, toto sos santos, totu vicino suoso. This is the distribution. Now, um, in the, the distribution over time, you, you, we can't really see much. Um, we can discuss this in the discussion, but I will just focus on the overall results of the whole Old Sardinian period. 
And there we see something interesting. Uh, so in the feminine singular, Toto agrees in the vast majority of cases, whereas in the plural, uh, Toto lacks agreement in the vast majority of cases. Uh, this leads us to the first conclusion that agreement of Toto was optional in Old Sardinian with a preference for agreement in the singular and a preference for lack of agreement in the plural. Now, are there any syntactic environments that trigger agreement or lack of agreement? Let us look at some possibilities, the presence versus the absence of the definite article. Here are the data that you have already seen. And we see we find both options either with or without an article. So um, I looked at all the data, there is no uh, correlation between article and agreement. The position of Totu in around 20 occurrences of the over 400 occurrences, we find post nominal Totu. And here we see cases um, in 6A and B where it does not agree, Fios suos Totu, Totu Fios suos. And here a, another case where it agrees. Um, so this doesn't yield any uh, explanation either. Um, now, there is one particular finding, which is total with numerals. And um, in particular, out of the 37 occurrences in the plural, uh, 23 contain a numeral. And conversely, uh, the lack of agreement is not attested whenever there is a numeral in the structure. So we add this to our conclusions. Agreement of Totu was obligatory in Old Sardinian with numerals. Now, this is how these structures look like. There are essentially three types, either Totu alone with the numeral, Toto Skimbe, here you see the agreement, all five, Totu plus numeral plus N, Totos tres fratrese, all three brothers, and Totu plus numeral plus definite article plus N, Totos sesos filios. Uh, just to mention it, this seems to be a quite widespread word order in old romance, <clears throat> um, in contrast to modern romance, with the article um, after the numeral and before the noun. However, Old Sardinian is particular interest particularly interesting because of the agreement facts, which we don't observe in uh, in the other Romance languages. Now, um, some theoretical background on universal numeric quantifiers, which is a name, I don't know if it's created, but used by Cirillo, Cirillo 2009. And there is some typological variation uh, in and without the Romance languages. Let's just focus on the Romance languages. Essentially, we have these three types. The first one uh, is um, a coordinating type with and, tutti e tre, which essentially is Italian. Um, then we have the same word order, but without this coordination, which is not possible in Italian, tutti tre, gli studenti, with the article following the numeral. This is the old Sardinian order. And then we have this order with the article preceding the numeral, tutti i tre studenti. Let's call them for now A, B, and C. And then we see uh, quite a variation. So French doesn't allow this at all. Spanish has only option C and also the other Ibero-Romance languages. Romanian seems to have the option B, like Old Sardinian, but the, the position of the article, since it's at the end, uh, post-nominally, it's a, a bit difficult to tell. Italian has these both options, A and C, and Old Sardinian, as we see, has only option B, while modern Sardinian has the same options like Italian, which might in fact be later Italian influence. Now, 
um, as I said, Shirillo calls this a universal numeric quantifier. And what is important here is that he considers not only uh, Chirillo, but most um, studies at which I've looked, considers this um, uh, A and B um, options here, that there we have one complex thing. Uh, for Chirillo, a complex Q head. And typically in this um, uh, universal numeric quantifier, this complex Q hat according to Cirillo, this is the order. So we have all plus numeral and then the determiner and then the noun, exactly the order that we find in old Sardinian. According to Cirillo, this, the type C, this is where the article intervenes. Uh, um, so there we have uh, two items in two different positions, whereas in the option B and also the option A, the Italian option with coordination, we have the one string in the QP. Uh, according to Cirillo, 19 and 20 are not derived from each other. Um, so in 20, he wants to derive the whole string, all three, um, to base generate it as a complex Q hat. And the main argument is that if we want to derive 16 out of 15, we would have to move the head, the cardinal head, and then we would have a, a violation of the head movement constraint. Of course, some questions remain in his theory, among others, this strange empty cardinal phrase in this structure. Interestingly, in, in Dutch, we find similar agreement phenomena. At least this has been interpreted as agreement. My knowledge of Dutch is not, is not so good. So we have uh, something like Alde Drie Studenten with the, what I call the C order. But when we get the B order, so the old Sardinian order, uh, we get uh, an additional schwa. And even there are dialect data in which both the determiner and the cardinal number get this additional schwa. And this was interpreted by Korva as agreement with the head noun. And Korva 2010 has another derivation than Chirillo. He says it's a phrasal constituent moved from a lower position into the left periphery of the DP. And this is his structure. So here you see uh, he also derives it as something like um, a complex head. Then he moves um, the, the complement women to the uh, specify of the number phrase. And here he says we get um, spec head agreement. This is why we have this agreement. And then I think this is problematic. He, what he does in reality is to move the number bar. So something which is not neither minimal nor maximal. Oops. Uh, he moves this to the specifier of the DP. Now, um, well, strangely enough, there is a quantifier, but there is no QP. And so I will now and try to present another structure with, uh, in um, the minimalist program uh, following uh, Chomsky's probe and goal framework and try to resolve this issue and apply it to the old Sardinian data. Now, first some basic assumptions on old Sardinian, which I, I guess are shared assumptions for many languages. So this would be more or less the the order and the, the hierarchy with respect to the QP, which is above the DP. In Old Sardinian, uh, as I said, the determiner was um, optional, which might also be interpreted as lack of DP, so the NP um, immediately um, following. Um, and now with respect to agreement, recall that agreement was optional, this means or translates into the minimalist program that we could 
merge TOT2 either with or without five features. Let's say first unvalued five features. And if it is merged with unvalued five features in such a structure as this one here, the most easiest case is to assume that it, the five features are valued like um, by something like Concord. If I don't merge it with five features, so I get just get the non, the, the uninflected type. As for the numbers, I would like to assume that uh, there is this cardinal phrase beyond, below the article, below the, the, the DP. And for Sardinian, we have to say that at least the number two shows agreement, um, duos, duas, so that uh, we can say quite safely assume that uh, this cardinal hat also has unvalued five features. And now for derive our, um, uh, to derive our case, so the, the, the obligatory agreement with numerals, let's first say there is some constraint. So when a numeral is present in the QP, TOTU must be merged first with a numeral. So we have to merge it somewhere here. And later it must, this is something I assume, it must be licensed via movement to the QP. And what I will um, assume is something like this. So I would like to generate the, um, the quantifier somewhere in the in the area of the cardinal phrase, so a low um, base generation side, and then move these two together. Of course, we can only do this with a remnant movement operation to a QP to get licensed. Now, um, now the agreement. Um, in a nutshell is explained like this. Um, this upper Q head has a probe which consists of something like um, operator features and unvalued five features. This TOTO needs valued five features and then it um, the whole card P um, is attracted with, a, of course, the remnant uh, because we have to move out this ominous before. Um, now we, we look at this. Um, ah, no, let's uh, say that for the, for the cardinal phrase, this is just, let's say, a provisional assumption I will make. I have um, constructed here something like a cardinal phrase shell but nothing hinges on this. So we could alternatively assume that in reality, there is a lower QP uh, alongside the upper one, which I assume, or we could uh, say that both are in the cardinal head. So I just work with this uh, left option, some cardinal phrase shell. I'm not sure if it's the optimal solution, but any of these would yield the same uh, result. Now look at the let's look at the derivation in, in some detail. So we have um, the structure which I explained to you, and um, now the cardinal head. Both cardinal heads have unvalued five features, and of course the NP, uh, the noun has valued five features, and then we have a first agreement step where the unvalued five features of the, um, of the cardinal head, of the lower cardinal head are valued. And then we can assume cyclic agree, which means that now the upper cardinal head gets valued its five features um, by probing the lower one. So this is how we finally get the valued um, five features. Then 
to, to have remnant movement, we must assume that um, the noun phrase moves out to some functional projection, which I don't know which, whichever this could be. Uh, however, recall that in Korva's um, derivation, he wanted to um, move it to a specifier position of, of its same phrase. And then he has this strange thing that he has to move a constituent, which is not really maximal. So we, we would have to assume a full uh, XP move, uh, movement um, to some functional projection. Then the determiner phrase is merged. Of course, uh, this is simplified. The determiner also would have unvalued five features which gets valued by probing either ominous or further low. They all share the same features now. Then I assume that the DP is a phase. We could do it without the assumption too, but if the DP is a phase, we have to generate an edge feature and move the cardinal phrase remnant here. Now, in principle, the structure would be complete, but then I assume that we have the QP. Um, and here, this is the probe, um, which now probes and finds the valued five features of Toto. Um, and the EPP feature generates a specifier position and then it moves. And later, well, sorry, here the tree got too high. I did it partially anew. Later, um, this whole thing is in the specifier and this Toto guy has valued features and uh, is spelled out as Toto, so it agrees. Now, to finish, let's... Uh, ask ourselves, why is agreement now obligatory? Well, this is because if I had inserted the TOTO without valued, without five features, so the, the, the non-agreeing variant of this quantifier, then this probe here would not find the features of TOTO because it has no features. It would, of course, find the ones of tres, but there should be a defective intervention here. So if I choose the non-agreeing variant of the, um, of the quantifier, the derivation would just crash. And this is why agreement is obligatory within this um, structure. Brief summary, not really an outlook, we have seen the old Sardinian quantifier TOTU all. Oh, there's a typo here, sorry for this, um, which was optional in old Sardinian. However, we have seen when uh, there is a numeral, then um, TOTU agrees obligatorily. Um, so, this is the structured issue, which we have identified as a universal numeric quantifier structure. And uh, I mean, this finding contributes to our understanding of universal numeric quantifiers in general, in particular showing that the agreement behavior observed in Dutch is not an isolated phenomenon. And finally, I came up with a proposal of a minimalist analysis that explains both the positional and the agreement facts. Thank you very much.